actually rather watch my podcasts than listen to them. And I said, these aren't like five second TikToks, and so you're going to, you know, I'm going to lose your attention. But I figured I'd try it anyways. And so while I am doing my regular podcast, I'm also going to be taping it. Why not? Let's see if it works. Who knows? I have a face for radio. All right. Hi, friends. It's Jim Sherman again, and this is The Next Weird Thing. And uh, this is my post-COVID Next Weird Thing. And so my voice is a little bit, a little bit weird, but uh, we're just going to roll with it. Uh, today, I decided I was going to tell a little bit of a story about a, uh, a ghost or ghosts or poltergeist that I may have actually encountered many years ago. I was probably 18 and I was working at a summer camp. Now it seems kind of weird. You're like, okay, you're at a summer camp. What about drag leg Sarah and you know the the eight foot turtle, which were stories that we told the kids. But uh, uh, this one actually is something that was strange and and really I still can't explain it. I will change the names of all the people involved, except for myself, uh, because they may or may not want to be a part of this, but, uh, and I will not tell you the name of the, the camp or anything like that. But suffice to say, this was a really cool camp in western Michigan, and what you got to do was, kids came there for free. It was a free camp, and uh, you actually had to prove need. And so you get these kids for a week, and they get really cool experiences. Archery, fishing, boating, swimming, uh, arts and crafts, all sorts of really just cool camp stuff. And uh, my internet just crashed. Real happy about that. Arts and crafts, uh, boating, fishing, all sorts of really cool things. And uh, the, 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 I mean, legit, the best part about it is the fact that it's free for these kids. And uh, I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to go to this camp. And it was right after I graduated from high school. I, I wanted to leave the house, of course. I was really excited about it. Being a, a camp counselor seemed kind of cool. Uh, I mean, neat new people, all sorts of cool stuff. Actually, gives me a test to see whether or not I like young people because I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but do I really, really like young people? And, and, and will young people survive under my care? So that's an important thing, I guess, to know. But uh, the, this camp is, is often in just Never Never Land, and it's, it, it's off on like hundreds and hundreds of acres on this lake. And the cool part about it was that it was broken up. There was a, like an, an impost and an outpost, and there was like a quarter of a mile dirt road uh, in between the two. And after the after legit day one, like we did, we had counselor training. It, that was so much fun because I'm there with a whole bunch of people who are like high energy, really cool people. And some of them are, are older. Some of them were 21. You get the idea. And uh, what was great about it was that it, it was just exciting and you're away from parents and you almost feel like an adult and so in between the sessions what we would have after we had training then we had a couple nights off and then you'd have a session with kids and stuff like that then there'd be uh, in between you'd have a few nights off but man it was really draining but in between sessions what you were able to do is you were actually able to have some time and instead of going home, like a lot of people did, some of us just kind of stuck around. And uh, that was where the fun actually started, you know, when there were no other adults there and certainly no kids. So it was a pretty cool deal. So uh, one of the things that we used to do in between camp sessions is play big old games of capture the flag. I thought that that was cool, and so I dressed in camouflage, and we goofed around, and then we realized that it ended up just being the dudes doing it, and that wasn't nearly as much fun. And so we're like, man, we got to find something to get the young ladies interested who were staying around, because th that was part of the... Let's try that again. Because that was part of the 
benefit and or bonus of being like kind of like adults uh, in an unsupervised situation, uh, there's, there's women there. And so well, what we decided to do was something that was absolutely forbidden. We were going to have a seance. Now we were told by the camp director, if anyone was ever caught holding a seance, communing with the dead, or playing around with a Ouija board or anything like that, that uh, we would be immediately fired. So, of course, that's something that was intriguing to all of us. And so what we decided to do was we were going to get together. There were about five of us that were in on this, and we decided we were going to have a seance. How cool is that? The only problem is, number one, we have to keep it a secret. Number two, only cool people could be involved. And number three, we had to find a place to do it that was appropriately scary, yet still, uh, you know, within, like, walking distance. And so, uh, one of the cool things is we found this really cool trailer. Now, this was like a mobile home that had been brought onto the camp uh, many, many years ago, obviously many years ago. And I checked it out during the day, and it was nasty and gross, but I'd found it, and I'm like, well, why don't we use the trailer? And in the day, the trailer seemed like an amazing idea. Just, like, legit. It's like, why wouldn't we use the trailer? And so I'm um, having some issues with the internet, so I'm going to have to play with this for a second. It seemed like the best place that we could go at the time because it actually seemed kind of spooky. Now, here's the issue. We have to find a group of people that are cool enough, you know, and, and, and are down with what we're doing and are not going to narc on us. And so one of the people we chose was uh, one of the uh, assistant director of the camp, and that was James. And then the little red-haired girl, who was a young lady that I was actually particularly intrigued with. There was a dude named Vino. Then there was the art director. Her name was Mo And then there was this dude named Josh. Now, Josh may be his name. I, I have no idea, but because uh, he's not particularly memorable, apart from the fact that his shoulders were kind of like out to here. But uh, uh, we'll call him Josh. So... All of these people get together, and what we're going to do is uh, Melinda is going to lead the seance, because she's kind of a hippie chick type of a thing, and she gets a whole bunch of candles, and we get flashlights together, and we're going we're gonna to meet at a certain time, like 11 or something, I forget, so that we could have the seance at, at midnight, which is apparently when you're supposed to have seances. Seances? seance I. You're supposed to host a seance. So... Uh, we head out down this road, and it's, it's hot, like legit, super hot. And we're having a good time just walking down this street, and, uh, and, and it's not scary at all, really. There's a whole bunch of us. We've got our flashlights and everything. Well, we get close to the, uh, the, the trailer, and then basically there's a road, and then there's m maybe 50 to 75 meters trail to the trailer itself. And... Uh, we stopped and clicked off our, our, our flashlights, and, and you could see the trailer because it was white up against the, uh, the, the background of the darkness of, of Satan. But um, we just kind of stood there for a while, not really 100% knowing what to do. And eventually, you know, I'm just like, oh, crap, they probably want me to lead the way. I don't want to lead the way. It's spooky. And uh, uh, finally what happened was a little red-haired girl goes, Jim, why don't you lead the way? Fine. All right, so I'm going to have to lead the way. And so I go to take the first step off of the trail into the dried leaves, and it's just like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh, good Lord. Everything within a mile radius knows I'm coming. That, that actually might be good. And so I look back, and I get like the thumbs up from everyone, and I continued to walk toward the uh, this really old trailer, the really, really old trailer, which is actually a lot more scary at night than it was during the daytime. And I'm not going to lie, I was actually a little bit freaked out about going into the trailer. And so when I get to the door, and what I had done, this is kind of clever, I thought, I had my flashlight on, but I had my fingers over the flashlight so that only a little sliver of light came out. And I clicked that flashlight off when I got to the door, 
and looked back, and I, I, I know I could see silhouettes of the people. They were still there, which was, which was good. But uh, I figured I was going to do something genius. I was going to pretend that the door was locked. I know. Genius. And so what I did was I opened the screen door, and it's like... Okay. And then I get to the other door, and all I'm going to do uh, is just shake the handle a little bit and then be like, oh, darn, it's locked. And then walk back and we'll find someplace less scary to have a seance. Um, I can admit that now. I was, I was spooked at the time. So when I went to knock the door, like to, to, to shake it, I bumped into the door handle and the door obviously opened like six inches and it, it went and it was obvious that it was open. And I knew everyone behind me heard it open, so I couldn't fake that it was locked. So what I ended up doing is I, I, I click on my flashlight, and I'm like, okay, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna peek in, see what's there. And I'm not even joking. I like, I'm like shining in and just freaking out because it was just weird. But what I saw was an interior. If you've ever seen a mobile home, there was a, a center area that was like the living area, and I saw a couple of old chairs that kind of looked like they were from an elementary school in there, and then there was a couch up against the wall near where I was standing. Uh, to the right, we had a, um, like a, a kitchen and a pantry, I guess you could say, and to the left, there were three doors, none of which were open. So, uh, at this point, I don't really want to go in alone, but I took a couple steps in just because, you know, to look around and make sure there was no, like, monsters there. But uh, then I called to everyone else and everyone else walked up and it was unbelievable how noisy it was when they were walking through these just crunchy leaves. And they weren't talking or anything. It was just super loud. And so here's where ah, I get smart and I think, okay, I want to make sure that I'm sitting next to the little red-haired girl. Huh? So what I did because I'm smart, is I situated myself in the middle of the couch, all right, and thinking that increases the chances that the little red-haired girl's going to sit next to me. So I sit down, no big deal. Uh, Melinda goes into the middle and lights a candle, and then to my right, there is uh, James. Boop, he plops to my right. No big deal. James is really cool. Then, boop, to my left, Josh. Josh, you blocked me, dude. You blocked me. So, not going to be not gonna be next to the little red-haired girl, but that's okay. So, we, we all are kind of in like a semi-circle kind of a thing, and Melinda lights a candle, and I'm sure she had tons of candles and weird stuff, and I'm sure smelled of patchouli and what have you. But what ends up happening is we're just sitting there, and the inside of this, like legitimately the inside of this cabin, smells like the urethra of a possum. It's just nasty. And I had, I will tell you that I did check some of the other rooms and stuff like that, and there was nothing there. The whole place was pretty barren. But... Uh, we're just sitting there, and uh, Melinda starts to say, If there are any spirits here, give us a sign. A whole bunch of nothing happens. Like, legit, nothing is happening. There's just no noise. And so we sit there for a while, and it's, it's not as exciting as, 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 as I had anticipated. I thought maybe something would happen. Uh, and, it, and it just didn't. So... We decided, oh, maybe we, maybe we have to, maybe we have to shake some things up, and so we started to say like mean things, you know, picking on spirits and stuff like that. Why not? And uh, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get a, maybe we'll get a reaction or something to that effect. Well, what ends up happening is, uh, at one point, M Melissa says, okay, everyone has to, has to relax. We have to calm ourselves. We can't be joking around. And what I need is everyone to be focused and just listen. And so she's like, after I say, is if there's anything here, just be super quiet. All right. And so we're, we're, we're in on it. 
And so what happens is she says something to that effect. She's just like, okay, if there are any spirits here, give us a sign. And so we're all just kind of sitting there. Bang. There's a bang. Legitimately against like the far side of the trailer. And it was, it sounded like mm, an acorn or something, but it hit the side of the, uh, the trailer. And so that's quite the coinky dink. That was weird. That, I mean, le legitimately that startled me, but things like that happen. If you're under an oak tree, acorns are going to fall and there's a chance one might hit the side of a camper maybe or something to that effect. Okay, all right. But it was exciting and interesting. So, here we go again. Was that you? Well, uh, was that your sign? Uh, you know, are you happy that we're here? All just all sorts of just weird questions. But then again, at one point we heard, right after Melinda said, give us a sign or something like that, we heard another... And this time, it was obviously a stick that hit the side of the trailer. The first one was to my right, the next one was right in front of me. And you can tell the difference when something is a stick that's hitting the side of the aluminum trailer. Or like the mobile home type of thing that we were in. And it's, it was one of those holy crap moments because there is something out there. And so I said, everyone just be quiet. We're going to hear someone walking around because you couldn't move out there without making a ton of noise on this, you know, the, these dried leaves and everything. And so we're just sitting there being unbelievably quiet. Bang! It happens again, but this time it's off to my left. So it started on my right hit in front of me, and then something banged on the left. Now, I don't know what it was that banged on the left because that was farther and it was through uh, another room. So I, I, I heard the thud, but I couldn't tell you what it was. At this point, I'm freaking out for a couple of reasons. Number one, it can't just be one person out there. It has to at least be three. They had to have been there for a long time or we would have heard them walking. Who's out there looking? Wait a minute, what if it's a camp administrator and we're all gonna get fired? Or what if it's worse? Like what if it's serial killers or something like that? And this is actually really a freaky situation. And I want out. I'm freaked out by this point. I'm not happy. I'm weirded out, and I finally, I said something, and I, I wanted to, I know I wanted to act tough, because I really wanted to impress the little red-haired girl, and minimally Melinda, so, I mean, she was like, tier two kind of a girl, and uh, I didn't want them to know that I was scared, but I was. And so I said, hey, let's just, why don't we just get out of here? This is a little bit weird, whatever. I was kind of trying to joke around a bit. And at that point, Melinda goes, no, 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 no. We just all have to focus our energy. She probably said something about chakras or something like that. I really don't know. And so she's like, okay, everyone, hold hands. And so we kind of, we, we decide we're going to get into like a circle or something like that. And um, so we, uh, Melinda kind of got out of the center, went off the side, and we're all holding hands. And I realized that, that James's hands were unbelievably soft. I'm like, my goodness, do you pumice and lotion? I mean, seriously, these are so soft. And uh, so we're sitting there holding hands, and something weird happened that I cannot explain. What hit me kind of from the right-hand side to my left-hand side, was a coldness that was very similar to if you open a refrigerator door and you feel the cold hit you. Except this went from my right to my left and gave me a... I, I, I literally shivered. And then I opened my eyes, because we're like 
I'm supposed to be closing our eyes and stuff like that. I open my eyes and I look and I see the cold hit Josh, little red-haired girl, Melinda, Vino, and then James. And then it stopped. And that freaked me out. That freaked me out. And then all of a sudden, bang, from behind me, the window that was right behind me, it was a rock. 100% it was a rock, not a big one, but enough of a rock that I knew it was a rock against the glass. And I got up to run to the door. And I know that uh, Vino did the same thing because he was kind of pulling at me. And we're like scurrying toward the door like some kind of three stooges or something like that. And all of the sudden, the little red-haired girl screams. And we all stopped. She let out this horrific squeal, scream, terror type of thing. And we all stopped and turned. And then she said, Vino, cut it out. Now, Vino's like pawing at me to try to get past me to get out the door. I know Vino's not doing something to her. And we look back, she sees Vino, she kind of looks back at her shoulder, and then she screams again and starts heading toward us. That's all I needed. Track skills kicking in, and I made it to the road, and I made it probably 200 meters down the road before I slowed down. And uh, I saw everyone else running towards me with their flashlights, kind of like from the opening scene of E.T., uh, just charging toward me. And uh, they, they, they caught up to me. And then we all kind of walked in together, freaked out. Uh, we eventually got into the, uh, to the camp, and the little red-haired girl said that she thought someone was, was tapping her, and she thought that it was Vino, and Vino was tapping her, uh, but he was next to me. And then she felt what she described as a stabbing pain. Now... Let me tell you the background story. Now here's the end part of the story. Uh, number one, I still, I, I, I'm still in contact with uh, some of these individuals, and so if, if they can clear things up, by all means, feel free. But uh, the, 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 the weird part of it is the fact that there was a background kind of story to it. And supposedly, uh, and I heard this through, like, the background, and so I don't know if any of it's real or not, but supposedly the trailer that uh, we got at the camp was donated, and the reason that that trailer had been donated was many, many years prior, obviously because it was derelict, uh, was because there had been a murder-suicide that had occurred in it. Uh, supposedly, uh, a, a gentleman and his wife or girlfriend or whatever always got drunk and blah, blah, blah. You get the, the idea. And, but one night, uh, someone called the cops. Uh, the guy came out, apparently, with a gun and, or a knife or some weapon. Uh, SWAT was called in, and what, by the time they got in there, uh, the, the husband was dead, and so was the wife. The wife apparently had been dead for a while. I, that's according to the story. But the strange part about it was that, supposedly, the wife had died from a stab wound to the back, which might explain why the little red-haired girl felt a creepy stab to her back. Not sure about that end part of the story, but I have zero explanation for why things were getting thrown up against the side of a trailer and we couldn't hear anything walking. Also, I can't explain the really cold shiver that went around a room when it was like a hundred degrees and humid. Uh, so I, ju I just can't explain that. Friends, thank you for listening. Uh, this is The Next Weird Thing, and I hope, hope, hope that you guys have a wonderful 
wonderful day. Guys, you can't see this, but this is my cane, and uh, I can't move because I've got an immobilizer on my leg, and I just had COVID. And boy, the one thing that I want to do is get out and have a walk without pain. So if you guys can get out and get into the woods and go hiking or do anything like that, my friends, never, 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 ever uh, forget how wonderful it is just to be able to go for a walk. I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for listening. And thank you guys for watching. I hope this I hope this works, and I hope it's interesting for people. And uh, and thanks for sticking around. <laughs> now I'm gonna hobble over and turn off the camera. Feels good. Jesus. Leg cramp. <laughs> oh Jesus! It's a.